Hey everyone, get ready to dive into a design trend that's anything but subtle. We're talking maximalist interior design. It's definitely a style that embraces abundance. Absolutely. So let's jump right in. What's the core idea behind maximalism? Well, it's funny you should mention abundance because for me, maximalism is about intentionality. Every piece, every detail, it's all carefully curated to create a space that tells a story. So it's not just about cramming as much stuff as possible into a room. Not at all. It's about controlled chaos. Think of it this way. If minimalism is a perfectly raked zen garden, then maximalism is like, um, like a wildflower meadow. I love that analogy. Both beautiful in their own way, right? But with maximalism, you're layering, you're mixing and matching, you're playing with color and texture. Speaking of color, our research mentioned bold color palettes. But where do you even start with that? I mean, isn't there a risk of it feeling chaotic? You definitely don't want it to feel chaotic. It's about balance. Think jewel tones, rich and vibrant, like sapphire blues, emerald greens, even deep mustards. And don't shy away from a pop of something unexpected, like a touch of fuchsia or a dash of tangerine. Oh, I can just imagine a velvet sofa in that rich emerald green with some fuchsia throw pillows. Exactly. It's about creating these interesting juxtapositions. That makes sense. But how do you keep it from feeling overwhelming? One word, curation. You're the artist and your home is your canvas. Choose pieces that speak to you, that reflect your personality and passions. So it's about creating a cohesive look, even with all those bold colors and patterns. Exactly, it's like a well-composed piece of music. There's a lot going on, but it all works together harmoniously. I like that. Now let's talk about those patterns and textures because our research also mentions layered patterns and textures and I have to admit that sounds a little intimidating. It's all about finding that sweet spot between visual interest and well, sensory overload. Think of it like layering different fabrics in an outfit. You might have a smooth silk blouse, a textured tweed jacket, and then a chunky knit scarf. It's about the interplay of those different textures. So you're saying it's more about creating depth and interest than just sticking to one or two patterns. Exactly. It's like instead of a single note, you're creating a whole chord. That's a great way to put it. Mm -hmm. So we've got these bold colors, these layered patterns and textures, but then our research also mentions curated clutter. And honestly, that phrase makes me a little nervous. Oh, I get it. The word clutter can be a bit loaded, but in maximalism, it's not about letting your home become messy or disorganized. It's about showcasing the objects you love, the ones that tell your story. So it's about finding beauty in the things that make you, you. Absolutely. Those vintage postcards from your travels, that collection of antique teacups, that quirky souvenir you picked up on a whim, they all add personality to your space. So instead of hiding those treasures away, you're encouraging people to put them on display. Precisely. They become conversation starters little glimpses into your life and experiences. I never thought of it like that, but it makes so much sense. It's about embracing that personal touch. But wouldn't all those objects create a sense of visual clutter? It's not really clutter if it's curated, right? Mm. Think of like a museum exhibit. Each piece is carefully chosen and displayed. It's the same idea here, just with your personal treasure. So you're saying my home can be like a museum. I like the sound of that but instead of ancient artifacts, it's my collection of vintage vinyl. Exactly. It's all about how you present it. Which, speaking of presentation, that makes me think of statement furniture. Oh yeah, our research mentioned that too. What makes a piece statement worthy in a maximalist space? It's gotta have presence, you know? Mm. Something like a vintage velvet chaise lounge, a colorful oversized ottoman, maybe an antique armoire with like really ornate carvings. So pieces that really draw the eye and make you stop and take notice? Mm. Yes. And you can play with scale too. Imagine an oversized vintage mirror or an enormous piece of abstract art that can really make a statement. I bet. Now, something else we came across was this idea of blending the old with the new. What are your thoughts on that? I love that. It's like, you know, mixing a vintage Chanel jacket with a pair of ripped jeans. It's unexpected and it adds a certain something, you know? Right, it keeps things interesting. So how do you achieve that kind of balance in a maximalist space? Well, let's say you have a really modern sofa. You could pair it with a couple of antique end tables or a vintage rug. Or maybe you have a collection of old family photos. Frame them in sleek modern frames and create a gallery wall. So it's about finding those unexpected pairings, those little twists that make it feel fresh and unique. Absolutely. And speaking of unique, don't be afraid to bring in pieces from different cultures. Oh yeah, our research mentioned something about maximalism drawing inspiration from all over the globe. It's true. 
Maximalism is all about embracing a sense of adventure and telling your personal story through your decor. So if you love Moroccan textiles or Japanese woodblock prints, or maybe you have some beautiful handmade pottery from Mexico. Bring it on. Exactly. Those pieces can really add a sense of history, of worldliness to your space. But what really elevates those global finds are the details, you know, things like rich textures, ornate carvings, luxurious fabrics. Oh, well, right. Our research also touched on the importance of detailing and ornamentation in maximalism. I have to admit, sometimes those little details can feel a bit overwhelming to me. Where do you even start? Well, for me, it always comes back to that idea of curation. Start with a few key pieces that you absolutely love. Maybe it's a beautifully upholstered armchair with nail head trim or a vintage lamp with a beaded fringe and build from there. So it's not necessarily about having every surface covered in embellishments, but more about choosing those details thoughtfully and letting them shine. This is all start to make sense. But with all this talk of layering and detail, isn't there a risk of overwhelming the senses? I mean, how do you create a sense of harmony when there's so much going on visually? That's the million dollar question. And it's where a lot of people get tripped up. But it's definitely doable. It's all about balance, you know, finding that sweet spot where everything feels, I don't know, energized, but not chaotic. So how do you do that? What's the secret? Well, one trick is to choose a color palette and stick with it. That doesn't mean you can only have like three colors in the entire room. But having some consistency, you know, like maybe you're drawn to warm tones, so you use different shades of reds, oranges, yellows throughout the space. So it's about creating a sense of cohesion. Yeah. And then within that color scheme, you can have all those bold patterns and contrasting textures, but they'll feel more harmonious because they're all playing within the same tonal family, you know. Right, so it's not just a free fall. There's a method to the madness. Exactly. And another thing that's really important is to create some visual breathing room. You can't have every single surface covered in busy patterns and textures. It'll just be too much. So you're saying even in a maximalist space, there's a place for a little minimalism. Absolutely. You've got to have those moments of calm amidst the chaos. Like maybe you have a gallery wall with tons of artwork and photos, but then the adjacent wall is just a single color, a place for your eye to rest. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So for someone listening who's like, okay, I'm ready to embrace my inner maximalist, mm -hmm. where do they even begin? Honestly, I always tell people to start with what they love. You know, take inventory of those things you've collected, the pieces that have meaning for you. Don't be afraid to mix and match. It's all about expressing your personal style. It's about making your home a reflection of you. Exactly. And if you're drawn to a particular color or pattern or texture, then go for it. Don't overthink it. Just have fun with it. Exactly. It's your space, so let it reflect who you are. I love that. This has been such an inspiring deep dive. It's amazing how much thought and intentionality goes into creating a successful maximalist space. It's definitely more than meets the eye, but when it's done well, it's just magical. Absolutely. We've... Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for taking this deep dive with us. Anytime. And remember, whether you're a seasoned maximalist or just starting to experiment with bolder design choices, the most important thing is to create a space that makes you happy. Until next time, happy decorating. Thank you.